Reliable 100% fiber internet kaya ang sarap maging tambahay with Red Fiber. Ilocos Norte First District Representative Ferdinand Alexander Sandro Marcos is announced as a Senior Deputy Majority Leader during regular session on Tuesday, July 26. This, a day after Congress, welcomes his father, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., to deliver the State of the Nation Address before legislators. The House also elected as its House Speaker, First District Representative Martin Romualdez, President Marcos's first cousin and Representative Marcos's uncle. Representative Marcos, 28, is a first-time member of the House. He occupies a post that was previously held by former Cavite Representative Crispin Remulia, who is now President Marcos's Justice Secretary. Sandro, at the time Remulia was Senior Deputy Majority Leader, was a member of his uncle's legislative staff. As Senior Deputy House Leader, Representative Marcos is also Vice Chairman of the Powerful Rules Committee. He can determine the 19th Congress's House rules as well as the procedures in various inquiries. Grappler CEO and Nobel Peace Prize winner Maria Reza challenges the cyber libel conviction by the Philippine Court of Appeals, citing 11 errors in judgment. Reza, together with her co-accused former Rappler researcher Reynaldo Santos Jr., asked the Court of Appeals to reconsider its judgment that upheld the Manila Court's decision convicting them of cyber libel. Reza and Santos say the CA violated their rights when it insisted on extending the one-year prescription for libel, applying the cyber libel law retroactively to them, and increasing the penalty for it. Ressa and Santos also say the CA violated a basic principle of criminal law when it failed to accord every doubt in their favor. They said it is abundantly clear that this court is well aware of the presence of competing interpretations of the law on libel. Yet when this case called for the application of these fundamental principles, this court did the exact opposite and adopted interpretations of the law and of facts that are most prejudicial to the accused. They note that even the CA acknowledged that their case involves a novel implementation of the cybercrime law, which was enacted four months after Rappler published a story on Kang. The CA sustained the conviction of Reza and Santos earlier in July 2022. In doing so, it not only added eight months to the prison sentence, but also extended cyber libel's prescription period to 15 years. Reza and Santos remain free and will not have to go to jail until and unless the Supreme Court sustains the guilty verdict. Attorney Tete of the Free Legal Assistance Group, Counsel for Reza and Santos, also challenges the Court of Appeals to take a second close look at international trends towards decriminalizing libel. Ressa meantime says the attacks against Rappler are political, not legal, aimed at preventing us from doing our jobs as journalists. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. excludes issues on human rights, justice, and peace in his first State of the Nation address on Monday, July 25. Marcos fails to mention peace and order and anti-criminality measures such as the War on Drugs, which is former President Rodrigo Duterte's pet project. Cristina Palabay, Secretary General of Human Rights Group Carapatan, also notes how there is zero mention of press freedom, disinformation, death penalty, and failed domestic accountability mechanisms. Meantime, in a live panel discussion after the Sona, Rappler editor-at-large Marites Vitug also points out the ironies or contradictions in Marcos's speech. For instance, though Marcos talks about healthcare, Vitug notes the president does not mention the very low vaccination rates for boosters and the nursing crisis in the Philippines. Vitug also says the president stresses the importance of science-based research but has not appointed secretaries yet for the Department of Science and Technology and the Department of Health. In related news, progressive youth groups slam Marcos's push to make the reserve officers training Core or ROTC mandatory for senior high school programs. In a joint statement Tuesday, July 26, they say, amid a crisis on student dropouts and mental health problems, Marcos's solution is to add to the burden of students by forcing them to go under ROTC. The government scrapped ROTC in 2002 when an investigation on the 2001 murder of a University of Santo Tomas student found he had exposed alleged corruption in the program. 
The lone suspect in the killing of three people inside the Ateneo de Manila University in Quezon City on Sunday, July 24, is a 38-year-old doctor from Lamitan City, Basilan, who supports vigilante justice, spreads hate against Rodrigo Duterte's critics, and rages against the Furigai clan of Lamitan. The suspect, Chao Tiao Yumol, is a popular personality on Facebook with at least 73,881 followers as of Monday, July 25. He is closely connected to other pro Duterte bloggers, particularly Maharlika or Bining Bining Maharlika, who has a history of peddling fake reports. After Yumol's arrest, Maharlika shared posts defending Yumol, in effect saying that he was merely pushed to kill because of the supposed injustices that he suffered at the hands of the foodie guys. Research by Rappler also shows Yumol has shown staunch support for former President Rodrigo Duterte and has attacked opposition figures. He also has had a years-long conflict with the Furi guys that supposedly began over the closure of an infirmary clinic operated by Yumol. Yumol's posts also show he has blasted former Vice President Lenny Robredo and other members of the opposition as well as media outlets like ABS-CBN and Rappler. Philippines' first Olympic gold medalist Heidelin Diaz is now married to her fiancé and coach Julius Naranjo on Tuesday, July 26. Their wedding comes exactly a year after Diaz took home the historic Olympic gold in the women's 55kg weightlifting category. Diaz stuns in a white bridal gown designed by Frances Libiran. In an earlier interview with Karen Davila, the weightlifting star said she is willing to choose marriage over her career. Meantime, Nadine Lustre sets the internet abuzz as she flaunts her bare body in a black-and-white nude photo shoot in Chargao. Photographer Wang Borja shares snapshots of the actress frolicking by the beach on Saturday, July 23. Nadine has yet to share photos from the shoot on her Instagram page, but the snaps quickly circulated around social media as fans complimented the actress. Nadine made her movie comeback in March with the horror-thriller film Greed. In July, she was confirmed to be part of the cast for Mikhail Red's The Leader, a psychological thriller revolving around the shady world of online content moderation.